Chapter 11 The End Is Nigh It had taken Issei the rest of the day to finally regain himself and upon doing so, he was surprised to see a frame of diamonds on his table, featuring both him and Azazel. The only problem, was Issei had no recollection of ever taking the photo. Um, I think I missed something, thought Issei. You kissed Gabriel, which turned Azazel into a massive manifestation of pride. He also named you his successor, inheritor of his will, one true son and idol from this point on. Said Diedrake. Oh, wait what? Asked Issei in shock. I must say though, I never expected you to do something so daring. Perhaps as your former embodiment of lust, but not now, I must have missed something for this to get past me. Commented Diedrake. Issei blinked before seeing a hand being waved in front of his face, only to turn and see the annoyed visage of Rainer. Finally, do you have any idea how long I've been trying to get you to snap out of it? Sheesh, just because she is a seraph, doesn't mean you need to shut down completely. She's just another girl after all, how is she any different to the others? Shouted Rainer in irritation. Issei smiled at this, not because Gabriel was just another girl, but because Rainer was irritated. You know, I might just like seeing a jealous Rainer everywhere I go. Thought Issei. Partner, you do realize she is just a manifestation of your mind. Questioned Diedrake. Didn't stop her from making me feel insecure. Retorted Issei. You know I can hear both of you. You both suck. Huffed Rainer. Your fragile mental stability aside, partner, you should probably go to bed, since it is midnight now and you do have school tomorrow. Said Diedrake. Issei mentally nodded, before making his way to his bedroom, only to see a massive photo of a grinning Azazel, giving him a thumbs up, hanging on his wall. Issei's eye twitched at the sight, before he gave a defeated sigh. You know what, nothing can bring me down right now yawn well, emotionally, I need a nap though. Muttered Issei, before plopping himself onto his bed and pulling the covers over himself. Line break. The morning came quickly for Issei and he woke up alone for a change. Come on, get up already. Whined Rainer unhappily. Well, almost alone. Issei got out of bed, without much fanfare, before grabbing another version of his school uniform. It was a good thing he had a spare, as his other pair was nothing more than shredded and tattered material now. Quickly dressing, Issei headed off to school, ignoring the figure that tried to gain his attention. Issei made his way to his seat and sat there, ruminating on what he had done. I hope I didn't mess things up. I mean, maybe Gabriel was just being kind, thought Issei. Yes, I knew it, you know I'm the only one who would ever show any interest in you. Declared Rainer triumphantly, with all due respect partner. I'm not even sure if a pure angel understands romantic interactions. A fallen angel, sure, but I think Gabriel may be too innocent commented Diedrake. See, Diedrake agrees with me, said Rainer, hopping onto Issei's desk, swinging her legs off the side playfully. However, in my opinion, I believe that if any person could make an angel understand that type of love, it would be you. Especially if that angel is Gabriel, from what I've seen. I think you are capable of doing what no one ever has before. Continued Diedrake. Now why do you go and say that Diedrake? Whined Rainer. I'm not going to lower myself to having an argument, with a figment of imagination, of my host's rattled mind. Scoffed Diedrake, but by responding to me just now, you did. Quipped Rainer playfully. Diedrake grumbled at this, but didn't say anything further, causing Rainer to laugh, before focusing on the arriving students. Hum, let's see, standard looking male student, standard looking male student, standard looking male student, standard looking female student with larger breasts than the average, standard looking female student, with pink hair, hum, those two seem to be looking at you funny, standard looking female student with glasses, creepy looking male student with glasses, creepy looking male student with a bald head, seriously, how are two virgins like that your best friends? Questioned Rainer, commenting on each student as they entered the classroom. Issei gave a small sigh at Rainer's mutterings, acknowledging that she wasn't real, but was in fact, a part of his mind, was odd, but it made listening to her even weirder. Diedrake, if, Rainer is a part of my mind, does that mean everything she says, is something I've thought, or actually think? Questioned Issei, I'll answer that, yes, everything I say is true, or at least, a part of you thinks so. 
That being said, of all manifestations for me to take, that fact that I'm in this form, means that you really have not moved on from me at all. You could have thought of Valley, or Riser, even that red-haired skank, but you choose me, well, your mind did anyway. Oh, and look who just arrived, said Rainair calmly, before becoming positively giddy towards the end. Issei didn't look, but he felt the healing prowess of the individual and knew who it was immediately. Do you think she feels bad? I doubt it, I mean, you've lost it how many times now because she died, or you thought she died? Obviously, when I had my way with her, but you actually went into Juggernaut Drive for that ungrateful elf. I mean, you drastically reduced your lifespan, irreversibly so, if it wasn't for that cat and for what? A girl who turned on you without any care for your feelings. Said Rainair darkly, oh sure, she can heal the scratched knee of a little boy, but poor Issei's heart, ripped to pieces. Ha, ah, it almost makes me happy she died, said Rainair mockingly, having adjusted her position on Issei's desk, so her elbows were resting on the table, open palms held together, supporting her head from under her chin, while her legs waved in the air, above her lower back. You know Issei, I almost did feel sorry for killing you. It wasn't much, but it was there. I just wonder how much she regrets what she did to you. No one did more for her than you. Sure, Red reincarnated her, but you pushed for that and then after that, you protected her. Every. Single. Time. Only for her to spit in your face. Continued Rainair. Issei's expression couldn't stop itself from shifting to a frown, as he recognized the cold truth behind Rainair's words. He had done lots for the former nun, but she had cast him aside, carelessly. Oi, Issei, what's with the frown, one of your girlfriends dump you? Asked Matsuda, initially in concern, before switching to jealousy. No, just a bad memory, said Issei, with a frown, momentarily catching a certain blonde's eye, before she quickly looked away in shame. Hum, that is something I've been wondering, what did happen between you and Asia? I was sure you were going to claim the pure maiden for yourself. Interjected Motohama, his glasses gleaming in the light. Yeah, all that hard work I put into teaching her about skinship was wasted. Added Kiryu, you should ask her then. Grumbled Issei, I did, but she won't say. Responded Kiryu, with a frown. Then just forget about it, I don't want to talk about it and if she doesn't want to say, then just deal with it. Said Issei sourly, pursing his lips slightly. Hum, you sound pretty grouchy Issei, what's the matter? haven't had any release lately. Asked Matsuda, causing the eavesdropping Murayama and Kates to cringe. Perverts, shouted Murayama angrily, don't rile us up, or we'll be right there peeking on you today. Warned Motohama, with a creepy grin, which caused Kates to shiver. Wait, you mean you guys haven't been peeping recently? Asked Issei in shock, with a gobsmacked expression. No, we decided to look into what you said, about us being appealing to women with our own skills. Answered Matsuda, with Motohama nodding, surprising Issei. Really? Questioned Issei. Yeah, Motohama even got a girl's number. She was just a six, nothing too impressive, but then again, when you're getting nothing, even a six becomes a ten. Recounted Matsuda, with Motohama puffing out his chest in pride. Really? That's surprising. Teased Kiryu. Eh? Hey, you're just jealous. You're only barely a six yourself so don't flatter yourself. Really, that's me being kind, you're really a five, but I'll give you a point for your ability. Said Motohama dismissively, wow, I really must have died because I never would have thought something like this was possible, back when I was alive. Commented Rainair in shock, pushing herself up on the desk and resting on her left thigh, with her left hand supporting her. I'm actually pretty shocked myself, muttered Issei. Before any further conversation could occur, the teacher walked in and everyone took their seats. I don't even know why you bother coming to this place. I mean, what does it even matter, if you can't differentiate equations, when you could literally destroy this entire school and even the town if you wanted to? You could be doing much better things. Sighed Rainair dramatically, Issei actually took a moment to mull Rainair's words over, before simply shrugging. Rainair sighed once again, before turning around, so she was facing Issei directly. Issei kept his attention on the front of the class, ignoring the restless fallen angel, who kept fidgeting on his desk. When the bell rang, 
Rainair cheered and jumped off the desk, as Issei sluggishly stood up. Oh don't be like that, I really want to see some familiar faces. Maybe the bitch who killed me will show up, chuckled Rainair, as if a deity was on Rainair's side. Upon existing his classroom, Issei made his way outside, only to see a red-haired figure directly in front of him. Issei took a brief moment to look into the blue eyes, he was previously mesmerized by, only to find them lighting a soft rage within his heart, which he thought had been extinguished. I Issei I, started Rias, but Issei walked past the girl, ignoring her completely, shocking those who had seen the action. Rias' shoulders slumped at this and she made her way to the old schoolhouse in sadness. Oh, the silent treatment, fitting, for someone who was familiar with having lavish attention thrown at them, both in this world and her true home. Said Rainer approvingly, Issei didn't respond, but his facial expression hardened slightly. Issei made his way to a tree, near where he and his friends peeped on the kendo club previously. Situating himself under it, Issei closed his eyes and tried to relax. Something else you aren't telling us, Issei? Asked Motohama curiously with Matsuda leaning over his shoulder. It's nothing, grumbled Issei. Well, if you are ready to see something, then watch and learn boys. Said Matsuda, with a grin, before making his way down to a familiar place that Issei had long since stopped visiting. Is he really going to start peeking again? Asked Issei, with a sigh. Just watch, he actually has a plan this time, a rather interesting one at that. Said Motohama, with a grin. Issei watched as Matsuda made his way towards the kendo club changing rooms, knowing they would be changing into their uniforms right now. Kendo girls, come out here, shouted Matsuda, getting Issei. To look at him like he had gone insane. Did he discover he was a closest masochist or something? Asked Issei in shock. Just wait for it, hushed Motohama. As expected, it took less than half a minute for the members to come out, prominently among them, Murayama and Kates. Now, I will have victory on this day because, I, have, would, shouted Matsuda, disgusting some of the members, as he reached for his waist, before pulling a shinai out, from the back of his pants, which had had kept hidden along his back. Issei watched in undisguised shock, as Matsuda quickly, albeit ungracefully, ducked the attacks of the kendo club, occasionally striking a few members on the bottom, with his weapon when he could, particularly Kates whose face was starting to match her hair color. Stop doing that, shouted Kates, after Matsuda had swatted her on the behind for the tenth time. Never, not until one of you agrees to date me, quipped Matsuda, in your dreams, shouted Kates, as she charged at Matsuda angrily. The battle persisted for a few more minutes, with Issei starting to notice something. Hum, I think he has a thing for the pink-haired girl, that's about the twenty-fourth or twenty-fifth time he has hit her behind, while all the others are on half a dozen. Commented Rainer, stop that, why the hell are you striking me the most? Roared Kates, with a furious blush on her face. Isn't it obvious, you are the true goal in my eyes. Your friends are appealing, but you will be my Momo. Declared Matsuda, really, he compares the girl he is interested in, with an AV idol. Muttered Rainer disdainfully, well, they both do have pink hair. Maybe that's something more appealing to him than a lowly. Thought Issei. Issei and Motohama continued to watch, as the two traded blows, with the other kendo club member, looking on in confusion at this turn of events. Kates continued to grow more and more embarrassed, with every strike Matsuda landed on her, before finally reaching her breaking point. Enough. Damn it. I'll go on one date with you, if you never peek on me ever again, and never swat me with that damn stick again shouted Kates, getting gasps of shock from the other kendo club members and triumphant grins from Matsuda and Motohama. Ha ha, a fair price to pay, so be it, declared Matsuda, good, said Kates, walking closer to Matsuda, until she was only half a meter away from him. You'll pick me up outside the school gates, this Saturday, at noon. Ordered Kates, of course, said Matsuda happily, oh, and one last thing, said Kates, before a swift movement caught Matsuda off guard and he found wood lodged, right where he would normally grow wood of his own. That was for my ass, you creep, shouted Kates furiously, as Matsuda slumped to his knees. Ugh, you'll regret this, when I need this working at full capacity, to give us kids. Groaned Matsuda, 
at Caddis's retreating back. Hum, I'm surprised that actually worked. Commented Rainier, with Issei agreeing nonverbally, as his face was gobsmacked, mouth open wide and eyes even wider. See, I told you he has a plan. That hit to the nuts though, that was probably a surprise for him. Said Motohama in amusement. I, I didn't think he could pull it off, but he actually did it. I'm honestly impressed, said Issei slowly. That's one small step for me, one giant leap for perverts everywhere. Groaned Matsuda, after he hobbled over to Issei and Motohama. If I was wearing a hat, I'd tip it to you Matsuda. That was by far, one of the stupidest things I've ever seen you do. But, it worked, said Issei in shock, causing Matsuda to grin. I planned this over the weekend. It always works with a Tsunere in most shows and Katase looked like a prime candidate, but damn does she have one. Mean swing. No porn for the rest of the week for me, said Matsuda, with a small groan. I suppose now I understand why they are your friends. They are just as perverted as you were and twice as stupid and lucky. Sighed Rainier, to which Issei grinned. Now you just need to figure out how to keep things from crashing and burning. Cheered Issei. Hmm, well his first date can't go as interestingly as ours, nay, Issei. Cooed Rainier, causing Issei to frown momentarily, before his grin reappeared. Just let me give you some advice. Don't take her to a park at the end of your date, it won't end well. Said Issei, with both his friends looking at him in confusion, before nodding, at his, sagely advice. The park, where things started for Issei. Thought a nearby, eavesdropping, white-haired girl. Line break. The next day of school for Issei, started off as normal as ever. Students slowly trickled into their seats, discussing the latest gossip, which in this case, actually dealt with the, perverted trio. Many students were lounging around as well, too tired to be at school this early. A few were also surreptitiously watching the subjects of the gossip. Lastly, to top it all off, Rainer was lounging on Issei's desk. Completely normal. Well, it was normal for Issei, as of late at least. I still can't believe he actually got a girl to go out with him, didn't you guys threaten to rape people with your eyes? How on earth does someone get past that? Asked Rainer, still in shock. Upon Katase entering the classroom, the chatter quieted down temporarily, but once she took her seat and didn't show any odd behavior, everyone calmed down with a few actually groaning in disappointment. What drew a few interested glances, was when a beautiful brunette, that no one could recognize, entered the room. Oi, Issei, is that a new student? Asked Matsuda. Why would I know? Asked Issei in bewilderment. Well, recently, every new student to show up had known you. Just thought you might have known this one too. We actually thought you were slowly bringing your harem into the school. Confessed Matsuda in embarrassment. Ooh, I know who that is. This will be fun, said Rainer, confusing Issei. How does Rainer know someone that I don't, if she is a part of me? Thought Issei in confusion. Well, clearly I'm the smart part of you, since that girl, is Kuryu. Replied Rainer. Kuryu, shouted Issei in shock, getting a few to look at him in confusion. Ah, why yes, it is me, Issei. I'm surprised you were the first one to realize, said the girl now revealed to be not a new student, but rather, Ika Kuryu, who, from the looks of things, had one hell of a makeover. The girl pulled out a familiar pair of pink spectacles and put them on, but that still wasn't enough for some people. Lies. There is no way that's Kuryu. Kuryu was a five, this is a solid nine. Shouted Motohama in shock, his glasses gleaming. Glad you think so. Truth be told, I never did care too much for appearances, but a five. I couldn't take that lying down, said Kuryu, twirling some of her hair around her right index finger. Kuryu had changed her hairstyle, losing her twin pigtails. She now had lightly curled hair down her right side, while the hair on her left side was left straight and cascaded over her shoulders. Her bangs had also been pulled back, revealing her forehead and the rest of her face, with it now being pulled back and held together, with a lime green ribbon, which matched her eyes. I am possible the same three sizes, it can't be, muttered Motohama in denial, I have to admit, I respect that, she couldn't be bothered dressing herself up for school, but when people question her appearance, she shut them up in the best way possible, said Rainer in, respect, now, 
let's face the truth here, Motohama, my glasses are more powerful than yours and you just said yourself I'm a 9, while to me, you're only a 6. But, play your cards right and maybe we can see what happens when you put a 6 with a 9. Smirked Kiryu, getting a few blushes, from some of the nearby girls, who understood the insinuation. Pretty bold too, I like her. Added Rainair in amusement. Line break. This is hilarious Motohama, Kiryu completely destroyed you in front of the whole class. Laughed Issei, with Matsuda chuckling as well. I will not, except that it was Kiryu in that classroom. Denied Motohama. Come on, you measured her yourself and your glasses never lie. Commented Matsuda, getting a nod of agreement from Issei. B but, if my glasses couldn't see the hidden potential of a 5 being a 9, just how much have I missed? Cried Matsuda in shock. Well, for one thing, you could realize that a girl's three numbers don't define her. Said Issei, getting both Matsuda and Motohama to look at him in shock. What? Don't look at me like that. It's true. You can't just have sex with a girl for the rest of your life. There are other things to do. Defended Issei. That's right. You can get stabbed by them, reincarnated by them, sacrifice your arm for them, die for them again, sacrifice your life force for them, get betrayed by them, stop me at any time if you've heard all of these. Quipped Rainair. To think, it'd be Issei out of the three of you, with an actual brain. Teased Kiryu, as she approached the three. I I refuse to believe this is Kiryu. Spluttered Motohama, before feeling two hands rest on his shoulders. Motohama. Face it. You lost, Kiryu beat your glasses. Said Issei, with Matsuda nodding in agreement. Motohama dropped his head at this, broken at his defeat. Oh don't be a sore loser Motohama, besides, you might just get to go on a date with this nine. Said Kiryu, with a smirk, getting the three of them to look at her in surprise. I talked with Katase and she would much rather have company on her date, so I offered to have a double date between you, me, Matsuda and her. So what's it going to be? Asked Kiryu. Just take the offer Motohama. Not only did she beat you, let's face it, you are the one who said she is a 9, this is your best shot. Said Issei. Fine, but I will upgrade myself from a 6 as well. I can't take this lying down. Declared Motohama. That's fine, there is always stand and carry, but you need to have some actual strength, like Matsuda and Issei for that. Smirked Kiryu. I'll show you. My perverted mind knows more than anyone in this country. Declared Motohama. That might not be a good thing you know. Muttered Issei in embarrassment, palming his face as he did so. In that case, noon on Saturday, don't be late. Said Kiryu, before turning on her heel and leaving. Issei watched Kiryu leave for a moment, before realizing something. It finally happened. The perverted trio all have girls for once, with real girls. Shouted Issei triumphantly. Success, cried both Motohama and Matsuda. Although, you guys are still really far away from having a harem, while I'm up to, said Issei, trailing off towards the end, as he started counting his fingers. Matsuda and Motohama watched as Issei counted and after he kept counting past four, they growled in annoyance. Go die Issei, shouted the duo, causing Issei to laugh heartily. I wonder if they'd say that, knowing you already died once and almost did again just recently. Teased Rainair, but Issei kept laughing. The perverted trio all had girls. Real girls, it must have been a sign of the apocalypse. Chapter 12 Surprises The week so far, had proved to be a rather lively one for Issei's class. First, there had been the madness of Monday, then the twisted events of Tuesday. Now though, everyone was waiting in anticipation, for what Wednesday might bring. Well, any ideas? Asked Rainair from her usual position atop Issei's desk, legs dangling over her back, but this time, she was supporting her head with her right hand and looking at Issei. Issei put his head back in thought for a minute, looking at the roof, before hearing someone clear their throat near him. Issei looked to his left and saw both Kuryu and Kate staring at him. Um, something you two need? Asked Issei in confusion. Actually, yes, said Kate firmly, causing Issei to raise an eyebrow in confusion. If you guys want protection for your dates, you'd be better off asking Xenovia, I still have no idea where she gets them from. Said Issei calmly, before muttering the last part to himself. That's not what we came here for. 
cried Katase in annoyance. But thanks for the tip, added Kiryu, getting Katase to look at her, with an embarrassed glare. You see, Murayama hasn't been too happy with the week so far and we also promised we'd go on our first date together, as best friends should. Started Katase. Hum, I see, that must have made you tagging up with Kiryu, hurt her feelings. Commented Issei, with Katase giving a stiff nod. Yeah, well, in any case, Kiryu had an idea on how to help her. Said Katase, before turning to Kiryu. Really, what did you think of? A makeover? Asked Issei in surprise. Before I answer that, do you really think Murayama needs a makeover? Asked Kiryu slyly. I don't think so. She'd probably be one of the top 10 girls in the school, in attractiveness, by my count anyway. Said Issei thoughtfully, rubbing his chin in thought and looking up slightly. In that case, what would you say to joining us all, for a triple date? Proposed Kiryu, surprising Issei. Um, what? Said Issei in shock. Well, let's just say, Murayama hasn't exactly had the best of luck with boys as of late. Outside of you three, she's had very little interaction with them at all and for that reason, tends to come off as too aggressive to most. Explained Katase. Uh, sorry then, apologized Issei sheepishly. Well, in that case, would you mind being Murayama's date this Saturday? Asked Katase. Well, before I answer that, let me make sure you all have a few things clear. Said Issei, getting a nod from the duo. You do realize I'm not exactly single. In fact, I've got about half a dozen girls who like me and I like them in turn. Not to mention, I've been fairly frequently doing it with one of them. Said Issei, getting two nods from the pair, although Katis's was accompanied by a blush. That's fine, it's just for the day and I don't think Murayama would care too much either. Just don't expect anything physical from her. Said Kate sternly, of course not, I'd never expect something like that, but are you sure she'd be okay with it? Asked Issei curiously, I'm sure, said Kate. okay then, I wasn't planning on doing anything this weekend anyway, plus, it'd probably be funny to see how badly Motohama and Matsuda screw things up. Said Issei, chuckling darkly towards the end, then Saturday at noon, don't be late, said Kate, before she and Kiryu walked off. This is hilarious, you've gone from hated pervert to a non-sexual pimp. Oh, I wish I was alive, so I could laugh at this for real. Also, you really didn't need to mention your harem, or your bedroom activities, you just felt like bragging, didn't you? Laughed Rainair, line break, once again, come lunchtime, there was quite a large amount of chatter going on. Issei, what's this about you going on a date with another girl from our class? Asked Irina with a pout on her face. I would like to, no as well, added Zenovia. Well, there isn't much to explain really, I'm going on a triple date with these two perverts, so the three girls we go with, can all be happy. Said Issei. Mo, but what about us? Asked Irina unhappily, giving a small frown. Hum, that's a fair point I suppose. Hum, how about you two both move in with me at my apartment complex? I still have a few rooms free and this way we can spend more time together. Proposed Issei. Irina and Zenobia quickly looked at each other, before breaking out into a smile, Irina's significantly larger than Zenobia's. Okay, we can come over tonight then. Cheered Irina, yes, I will come prepared as well. Said Zenobia, pulling out a bunch of condoms. For crying out loud, where do you keep getting these things from? Asked Issei snatching one from Zenovia's hands. Hum, I have secrets too Issei. Said Zenovia proudly, confusing Issei. I didn't mean where you get them from exactly, I meant where do you keep pulling them out of. Clarified Issei. My bra of course, said Zenovia, pointing down her shirt. I see, said Issei, pocketing the condom, upon seeing dangerous glares being sent his way from Matsuda and Motohama. Anyway, we'll see you later tonight then said Zenovia, before she and Irina walked off. Issei turned to face his two friends, who were glaring at him in jealousy. Hey, don't look at me like that, you guys have girls as well now. Said Issei defensively. Too many, you have too many and it isn't fair. Commented Matsuda, well too damn bad, I've struck out more than both of you combined in the past, so it is only fair I get more in the end, simply from how much effort I put into this harem thing. 
You guys just watched porn, for like a year, before doing anything. Retorted Issei. I suppose that's a fair point. Said Motohama unhappily, with Matsuda reluctantly nodding. Besides, this just means you can both profit from my expertise. Said Issei in pride. Oh yes, the expertise on how to get thrashed by your love interests, I'm sure they would love to know about that. Drawled Rainair sarcastically. Line break. The day quickly concluded with little fanfare, but whispers of Irina and Xenovia moving in with Issei, were starting up and would no doubt explode come tomorrow. Alright, I'll wait here for you both, so after you grab your stuff, we can all head home together. Said Issei, getting an excited nod from Irina and a cool one from Xenovia. Issei stood by the gates, watching as everyone left, absorbing himself in a conversation with Deidre. So Deidre, if Grendel came back, do you think other dragons will as well? Asked Issei in worry. A strong possibility. Dragons were always feared for their power. After all, the threat of me and Albion simply fighting, united the three factions. It is worrying though, because the evil dragons, like Grendel, are in fact stronger than the current five great dragon kings, six previously, when Tannen was a part of the group. Said Deidre gravely. So these dragons are even stronger than Tannen. Man, that's not good. Thought Issei. It gets worse, considering that one of them, Krom Kruok, was very close in power to Albion and I, last I heard at least. Added Deidre. That, is bad then, really bad. Thought Issei in worry. Deidre didn't reply to this, but Issei could feel his silent agreement. Issei closed his eyes in thought, before a voice broke him out of them. Hum, what? Asked Issei in confusion, as he looked up quickly, only to see Murayama in front of him. I said can we speak for a minute, Issei. Repeated Murayama patiently. Um sure, what's up? Replied Issei. Well, Kates and Kuryu told me about this weekend, so I wanted to speak with you. Explained Murayama. That's fair I suppose, what's on your mind? Asked Issei calmly. Firstly, you know that you don't actually have to do this, right? Asked Murayama, with a slightly narrowed gaze. Sure, I figured as much. Answered Issei coolly. Secondly, you better not expect anything physical to happen. Said Murayama, with a hint of warning in her tone. Like I told Kates and Kuryu, I know. I wouldn't expect you to anyway, you're better than that, otherwise, you wouldn't have beat the three of us up so much in the past. Said Issei, chuckling towards the end. Murayama gave a brief smile at this, before schooling her features again. In that case, I just want to ask you one last thing. Why? Asked Murayama. Erm, why what? Asked Issei in confusion. Why would you agree to do this? If it were before your self-discovery thingy, I would have said it was because you were a horny beast, but if you already have a girlfriend, or multiple girlfriends, one of which you do certain things with, why would you want to go out with me, knowing nothing will happen? Asked Murayama carefully. Hmm, a few reasons I suppose. One, it'll be fun to see how badly Motohama and Matsuda flounder on their dates, that I can't miss. Two, I really meant it when I told Kuryu and Kates I have no plans this weekend and me being bored isn't a good thing. I get pretty destructive if I'm bored, or train excessively, neither of which are fun, despite what it may sound like. Said Issei thoughtfully. Murayama gave a soft sigh at this, dropping her head slightly. Lastly, who wouldn't want to go out with a beautiful girl like you? Even if it is only for a couple of hours, anyone would be lucky to take you on a date. Finished Issei, getting Murayama to look up at him searchingly. Really, do you really mean that? Kuryu told me what you said, about me being one of the top 10 girls in our school, in your mind. Do you really mean that? I mean, compared to most, I'm pretty plain and boring, and I suppose a little violent too. Queried Murayama cynically. Of course I mean it. Even before I got a single girlfriend, you were always in my top 10 list, it's also why I never bothered peeking, on the rare occasions you didn't show up to school. Said Issei, leaning in closer and whispering conspiratorially towards the end, with a wink, to which Murayama laughed. I don't know if I should take that as a compliment, or an insult. Said Murayama dryly. Take it however you want, it's the truth. Said Issei, with a grin. Murayama couldn't help a small smile herself, as she examined Issei's relaxed face. You know something Issei, for what it's worth, 
I'm glad you went on your little self-discovery trip because you're a lot more likable now and much less of a pervert. Said Murayama honestly, but Issei couldn't help a small wince. Yeah, I suppose I wasn't the best sort of person, personality-wise, before that, but people change I suppose. Said Issei. Well, some people do, others just fool you for so long, that you never expect something from them. Added Rainair mockingly, causing Issei to frown. Well, for what it's worth, you're a lot more fun to talk to now at least, it also helps that you don't peek anymore. Said Murayama calmly, thanks, said Issei happily, I'll see you on Saturday then, said Murayama, before walking off. It was only a few minutes later, that both Irina and Zenovia appeared, carrying a small amount of luggage. Ready to go, asked Issei, yeah, said Irina somberly, something wrong, asked Issei in concern, it's nothing said Irina, before remembering what had just happened only minutes ago. Line break. Flashback. Line break. Irina had just finished packing her things, before heading down to Zenovia's floor. It helped that Irina's floor was free of any volatile personalities, but Zenovia didn't have the same luck, which made Irina somewhat apprehensive. When Irina had made her way to Zenovia's room, she noticed the door ajar slightly and could hear voices speaking. Irina couldn't make out what was being said, but she could hear one of the voices sounded quite bitter. All of a sudden, the door was opened and Akino stormed out. The hybrid paused for a moment, to observe the angel and saw her luggage as well, before quickly making her way to her room and slammed the door shut behind her. After a moment, Zenovia walked out, carrying her luggage as well, in a blue carry-on bag, in contrast to Irina's brown. Problem? asked Irina apprehensively. No. No problem, replied Zenovia calmly, before the two left and made their way down the lift. Luckily, they didn't run into any of the other girls on their way, which made exiting the house easier than it could have been. As the two made their way towards the door, they saw Issei's father sitting in the living room, reading a newspaper. Where would you two be off to? asked Issei's father in interest, momentarily lowering his newspaper. Thank you for your hospitality Mr. Hyodo but Zenovia and I have made other living arrangements. Sorry for being such a burden on you for so long and thank you for having us. Said Irina, with both her and Zenovia giving a bow. Ah, it was no bother at all Irina, you're practically family after all. Do give my regards to Issei though, both of you. Said the older Hyodo, before reopening his newspaper. Ea what do you mean? Spluttered Irina, I may not be the smartest man around but I know enough about Issei and you to figure things out for myself. As long as Issei is fine with it, you both have my blessings, now shoo before someone else gets down here. This house isn't as quiet as you'd think and I can tell that you two don't want any more friction to occur, between you two and the others. Said Issei's father, not looking up from his newspaper. The two heeded the wise words and left immediately. As the two walked down the street, Irina noticed Zenovia looked rather calm especially considering what may have just happened between her and Akino. Zenovia, what happened up there? Asked Irina kindly, but firmly. It was as you'd expect, someone was clearly unhappy that we had been forgiven and they hadn't, that's all. Nothing too groundbreaking, replied Zenovia calmly. Did you tell her where we're going? Asked Irina nervously. No, but I'm sure she figured it out, more or less. Not the location though, said Zenovia. Irina sighed, but spared a glance back at the slowly shrinking building, as they walked away from it. Line break. End flashback. Line break. All right, if you're sure. Said Issei, snapping Irina out of her thoughts. The trio made their way to Issei's apartment in silence, before finally arriving, just as the sun had started to set. So which rooms do you girls want? All the rooms are free, well, aside from mine obviously, but feel free to come by at any time asked Issei. The duo looked at each other, before giving a silent agreement. Could we have rooms opposite each other? Asked Irina. Sure, ground floor, or the floor above that? Asked Issei. The latter. It would be best if we are as close to you as possible, especially if we need to make a baby in the future. Said Zenovia, getting Irina to look at her, with a blush. I think if we were going to make a baby, we would probably need to be in the same room. Laughed Issei. Hmm, fair point, but it couldn't hurt. Responded Zenovia, with a nod. 
No worries, let me just go grab you two your keys, one sec. Said Issei, before dashing into the complex. Xenovia, you're still too forward, chided Irina. On the contrary, Irina, it seems I'm beginning to see some success. Not only did Issei take a practicing tool from me today, he didn't say it was still too soon for us to talk about making a baby. Said Xenovia calmly, causing Irina to pause and think on it. Ah, here they are. Your room is on the left, Xenovia and yours is on the right, Irina. Well, both are identical, so feel free to switch if you want to. Said Issei, as he handed the girls a key each. What about a key for your room? Asked Xenovia. Ah, well I do have a key, but I actually never really lock my door, which means people tend to come in on their own. Said Issei, turning towards Irina at the end, who smiled cutely and stuck out her tongue. So don't worry about that. The keys are just mostly so you girls can have privacy if you want it. Explained Issei, before giving a yawn. Well, I know it is only about seven or so, but I'm feeling tired. Do you two need any help unpacking? Asked Issei. No thanks Issei, we should be fine. Said Irina happily, with Xenovia nodding in agreement. Cool. In that case, I'm going to go to bed. I normally leave for school at 8, so I'll come by and give you both a knock at 5 too, in case you want to go together. If you need more time to prepare, that's fine, but the offer is there. Said Issei, before heading upstairs. Issei made his way to his room, opened the door and made his way to his bed, before lying down on it and promptly falling asleep, ignoring the fallen angel who had been trying to get his attention on the bed completely, much to her chagrin. Line break. As Issei had said, he woke up, got dressed and made his way down to Zenovia and Irina's floor at five to and knocked on their doors. Both girls were ready to go and the trio made their way to school, which started to set off whispers. High school, always gossiping, thought Issei in amusement. As the three made their way to their classroom and sat down, Rainer made her presence known by standing on Issei's desk, instead of lounging on it. Finally, I've been trying to talk to you for hours now. Don't you know it is rude to ignore a girl? Ranted Rainer. Also rude to kill someone. Thought Issei dryly, causing Rainer to laugh and resume her usual position on Issei's desk. Hum, I suppose that's fair. Oh, look who just walked in standard looking female student, with larger breasts than the average. Commented Rainer. Issei turned and noticed Murayama had indeed entered the classroom and in a move that surprised Issei, gave him a small smile and wave, which Issei returned after a moment. Okay, that's it, I concede defeat. You were clearly the luckiest pervert in the world, to get a girl who you used to peek on, to like you. This is unfathomable, uttered Rainer in shock. Issei heard a few people begin to mutter at this recent turn of events and couldn't help but laugh internally. What a week, thought Issei in amusement. Line break. Come lunch time, the trio of former peepers made their way to the same spot as the day before. After all, even though they stopped peeping, the spot was pretty comfortable, providing a large source of shade. Teach us master, cried Matsuda and Motohama, once Issei had sat down. What? asked Issei in surprise. How on earth did you make Murayama so nice to you? You used to peek on her as well, but she didn't smash a shinai into your trousers. Asked Matsuda, wincing slightly at the phantom pain he felt. I just talked with her, it isn't that hard. Answered Issei in bewilderment, which was compounded, when Motohama produced a notepad from somewhere, glasses fixating on him intensely. About what? Asked Motohama eagerly. Well, she asked me about my reasons for agreeing to go on the date with her. Started Issei, only for Motohama to eagerly start scribbling. What did you say? Asked Motohama not looking up from his notepad. The truth. Firstly, that it would be really funny to see how badly you two flounder on your dates. Secondly, that I have no plans this weekend and lastly, that who wouldn't want to go out with a beautiful girl like her. Recalled Issei. Whoa, that is gold. Said Motohama in awe, as he finished writing and looked up at Issei. With words like that, no wonder you've gotten a harem. Added Matsuda in admiration. What do you mean? Asked Issei in confusion. You must teach us to be like you Issei. We will never tell you to go die again, as you were clearly sent to this planet to impart your wisdom, on lowly perverted mortals, such as us. 
said Matsuda, with Motohama nodding in agreement. Okay, first rule then, don't say stupid stuff like that, said Issei, to which Motohama dutifully took notes, causing Issei to sweat drop. Secondly rule, always be truthful with a girl. Be genuine and don't lie to her, continued Issei. Third rule, hum, third rule, you know what, the third rule is to obey the first two rules. Don't be overly perverted and be honest and genuine with a girl, that's really all you need to do. Finished Issei thoughtfully, as the duo of harem-less perverts listened to the wise words, of the harem-possessing pervert, none of them noticed a girl listening to them a short distance away, with another person next to her listening as well. Line break, the day finished off as normal for Issei, only this time, he made his way home with Zenobia and Irina in tow. Issei thought about asking Irina, if Michael had told her anything about Grendel and what he and Dulio had investigated, but reason, that if Irina only had two wings, she probably wouldn't have been told and decided to visit heaven himself, to get his answers, directly from the source. As the familiar door appeared in front of Issei, he entered the light and eventually made his way to the sixth floor. Only Michael was present this time, but that was all he needed for now. Issei, I wasn't expecting you back so soon, said Michael in surprise. I was just wondering about a few things, to do with what Dulio and I found. Said Issei, what is on your mind? Asked Michael calmly, well, for one thing, does Irina know about any of this? For that matter, exactly who does know about this all? Asked Issei, Irina does not know and outside of the Seraphs and Dulio, only you know the situation as well. Answered Michael, I see, I also have a question more directly related to the issue at hand. Exactly how strong are the current measures we have against dragons? For that matter, since I'm familiar with it, what kind of chance does Ascalon have against someone like Krom Kruok? Asked Issei. In reverse order, Ascalon would be capable of severely wounding and even killing a dragon of Krom Kruok's caliber. The only problem is having someone who can fight him and survive long enough to be able to use it to its full potential. Aside from Ascalon, there is not a great deal many items we can use, that are capable of specifically harming dragons. Explained Michael, hum, said Issei thoughtfully, before causing his boosted gear to appear and brought Ascalon out, sticking straight out of the red gauntlet. I suppose I should probably learn how to use a sword then, I mean, I can use the aura and boost it repeatedly for attacks, but I think direct contact would work better. Said Issei, you would be right in your line of thinking. However, even without Ascalon, you yourself are capable of harming powerful dragons, with your own abilities. Combine that with the boosted gear and you are a formidable opponent in your own right, however, given you have two very skilled sword wielders now living in close proximity to you. Training is a very valid option for you as well, said Michael. Issei raised an eyebrow, at the fact that Michael was already aware of Irina and Zenovia moving in near him, but didn't dwell on it as he saw Michael quickly walk over to a small wooden table and grasp what looked like a few slips of paper. Now Issei, what I am about to give you needs to be kept quiet, particularly from the devils and fallen angels, the devils more so. Said Michael sternly, Issei nodded, prompting Michael to continue. You see, the brave saint system, is ultimately quite limited, to 54 angels at that. However, as I'm sure you know, the devils have a system, allowing for multiple people to be converted, by those lower down in the power chain. The angels have had no success with this, as it seems no angel is able to bestow this sort of power on anyone, aside from the seraphs themselves. We haven't tested it with Dulio, as he does have a habit to be rather restless, however, with you staying with Gabriel and in heaven for close to a month, those on the floor below were able to glean something from yourself. Explained Michael, surprising Issei. You mean that's what those energy tests were for? I thought that was just to measure my powers as an angel, coupled with the boosted gear. Questioned Issei. Indeed it was. However, through this process, we determined that you may be capable of reincarnating angels yourself. The boosted gear already possesses an innate transferring ability and coupled with that, it works on your desires and responds to your will. Said Michael, before handing Issei three blank cards, completely white on both sides. We were able to develop a few cards, which may be successful at reincarnating someone into an angel. However, even when others tried to use these cards, they were unsuccessful. 
Since they were directly created from the capabilities of the boosted gear, we believe only you can make use of them. Finished Michael. Seriously? Gasped Issei, taking the cards in his non-gauntleted hand and looking at them all. That is actually quite interesting. Michael does make a valid point and I do believe you may be able to do so Issei. All sacred gears, not just mine, respond to a user's will. Given how you were able to come up with different versions of the boosted gear, with your ability to promote, it seems you would also be successful at converting people, through use of your transfer ability. It may also explain why your wings were red, my presence aside. Commented Diedrake, speaking from the gauntlet. We are unsure on just who they may work on. Highly religious people, common humans, devils, fallen angels, yukai, even dragons, but we are entrusting them to you, in the hopes that you will find people to use them on and inform us of the results. Elucidated Michael. Hum, devils you say. Muttered Issei thoughtfully. I understand your thoughts Issei, but should you follow through, please be mindful of the ripples you may create. Said Michael sternly. I will. Said Issei calmly, fully expecting Michael to determine what he was thinking, given what Michael had just, moments ago, revealed to him. In that case, you may leave now if you wish. Gabriel is not here currently, unfortunately, however, if there is anything else you would like to discuss, feel free to come to me as well. Said Michael. All right. One last thing though, should I tell Irina about any of this? Asked Issei. If you do what I think you will do, which I urge to think carefully on before proceeding, you may, but only about the cards. It would be best if we not alarm too many, about the possible threat of numerous evil dragons returning. Answered Michael. Issei nodded, before giving a small bow and leaving. Michael let out a small breath once. Issei had left. I do hope this doesn't cause even more tension between the three factions. Thought Michael grimly. Chapter 13 Not the Fruit. As Issei returned from heaven, he went to his bedroom and sat down on his bed, deep in thought. Come on. You can't seriously be thinking about this. You already got fooled by her once, why on earth would you want to try something like this again? Asked Rainer cynically. This is different, this isn't personal. This is about the future and the possible battles it might bring. Said Issei, to the figure in front of him. Yet this can only occur through you, no one else, so it is very personal. Don't you get it? This is like the angel equivalent of a peerage. Can you really trust her again? I mean really, really trust her. Asked Rainer calmly. Issei looked at the cards for a minute longer before putting them on his bedside table. Rainer smirked, but Issei looked at her. I'm not doubting her, but this is a big decision and I need time to think about it. Defended Issei. Sure, sure, whatever helps you sleep at night. Dismissed Rainer, with a wave of her hand. Sleep. That's not a bad idea. Muttered Issei, before taking off his school uniform. After Issei had taken of his shirt and blazer, he took off his pants, only for something to fall out of his pockets. Issei bent down and retrieved the small shiny object, before chuckling, at seeing it was a condom that Zenobia had kept flashing around. I mean come on Issei, she just wants your kids like the cat. Drawled Rainer in boredom, not true, since that wasn't always her original goal. Replied Issei, whatever, although, I'm surprised you're actually talking back to me now finally realized how much you want me? Asked Rainer cheekily. No, but if I'm alone, there isn't anything wrong with talking to myself. Replied Issei, as he pulled out his pajama shorts and shirt, before putting them on. So, if we have sex, does that mean you're just masturbating? Asked Rainer curiously. Issei looked at Rainer searchingly for a full minute, confusing her. Yep, you're definitely part of my brain, since questions like that keep me up at night said Issei, with a small quirk of his lips. I could keep you up another way you know. Heard Rainer. You actually can't, since you're not real. Said Issei, before grabbing a pillow and throwing it at Rainer, which caused her to disappear. Hey, that was rude you know. Said an indignant Rainer, as she appeared beside the bed, instead of on it, as she had been previously. Whatever. Enjoy silence for another eight hours. Said Issei as he climbed into bed and closed his eyes, with a smirk. Ass, grumbled Rainer unhappily. Line break. As Issei awoke for the final day of school for the week, he paused for a moment to reflect on the week so far. 
Man, this has been one hell of a week. I honestly couldn't have imagined things like this happening before. Thought Issei in surprise, as he dressed himself. It was Friday at last and tomorrow would be the very interesting triple date, which Issei was looking forward to, mostly to see how Motohama and Matsuda would act on a date, but also, due to the fact that Murayama had managed to pique his interest yesterday. Her sudden friendliness puzzled him and had him wanting to understand what could have caused the change. Just like yesterday, Issei left for school, with Irina and Zenovia in tow, before making their way to their class. What a week. I can't believe all of this stuff happened over four days, I doubt anything will happen today though, that'd just be insane. Said Rainer, once again lounging on Issei's desk. Hmm, well, this actually gives me an idea, and not just to spite you, since you are really me anyway. Thought Issei, causing Rainer to look at him in curiosity. Line break. Come lunchtime, the trio of female enthusiasts were under their usual tree, only for Issei to surprise the other two, when he stood up and told them to watch what he did next. In a move reminiscent of Matsuda's actions on Monday, Issei made his way to the kendo club change rooms, but unlike Matsuda, waited outside the front for them to come out. The emerging girls looked at Issei warily, but didn't say or do anything. After most of them had left, Issei patiently waited for the last two to come out, who were Kates and Murayama. Hi Issei, something wrong? Asked Murayama calmly. Well, not exactly wrong, but I was wondering if you would do me a favor. Asked Issei sheepishly. What kind of favor? Asked Murayama, narrowing her eyes as she did so. Don't worry, nothing like that. I just wanted to know if you could teach me kendo. If you weren't too busy I mean. Said Issei quickly. Both Kates and Murayama looked at Issei in surprise. Really, why the sudden interest? Asked Murayama curiously. Well, I know can hold my own in a physical battle, but I think having an idea on how to use and defend against weapons might be useful. Explained Issei. And that just so happened to come to you today, of all days and on one of the most eventful weeks of the year. Said Murayama suspiciously. Well it isn't like I planned it, but I mean if you don't want to, that's fine, there are always other people I can ask. Said Issei coolly, turning his back on the duo and starting to walk back to the perverted duo. Will this affect tomorrow at all? Asked Murayama curiously. Nope. Tomorrow is still set. This is a completely different thing. Said Issei, pausing to look over his shoulder. Then I'd be happy too. It'd be interesting to see if your new physique has made you a better target. Said Murayama, with a smirk. Oh, I'm sure I'll surprise you. Said Issei, with a wink. In that case, how about a quick spar after school? Proposed Murayama. Sure, sounds good to me. Said Issei, giving a wave over his shoulder, as he walked back to his fellow perverts. The week continues. Thought Issei in amusement, watching Rainer huff in irritation. Line break. Surprisingly, word had spread rapidly once again through the school, at Issei suddenly taking an interest in Kendo. This also happened to reach the ears of a certain blonde. If we had known better, Issei would have most likely come to me for help. Help, Issei helped us all, but we couldn't help him, we really were, our, terrible friends. Thought Kiba, his face fixed in his usual fake smile, even though beneath the surface, he was drowning in guilt. We need to do something about this. If both Zenovia and Irina could be forgiven, there exists a chance, however slight, that we may be forgiven as well. Thought Yudo, with newfound determination. Line break. Issei made his way to the outside sparring ring for the kendo club, located just a stone's throw away from their changing rooms. The school was largely empty now and only a few people, who also had late club activities remained. When Issei arrived, he noticed Murayama, garbed in her kendo attire and was holding two shinai. You don't mind doing this test in your school uniform, do you? Asked Murayama curiously. Nah, it's fine. I'm surprisingly pretty comfortable in these clothes. Said Issei, before quickly raising his left hand, to grab the stick of wood that had been thrown at him. Quick reflexes, that's good, it'll help you avoid being struck. Appraised Murayama. Murayama walked over to Issei, holding her weapon down, informing Issei that combat was not about to begin yet. Murayama circled Issei quickly, before coming to a stop in front of him. Well, you have a balanced build, so a 
fairly basic opening stance would be your best bet, said Murayama, before raising her shinai in front of her, bending her knees slightly. Her left foot was positioned at a 45 degree angle and her right foot was pointed straight ahead. Right hand above left on the suba. Lastly, Murayama was bent ever so slightly forward. This is the stance you would want to take, instructed Murayama. Issei observed the stance, before quickly mimicking it. Good, said Murayama, with a nod, before taking a few steps back. Now, before we start, do you know the basic striking techniques? Asked Murayama, more or less, this stuff is based on Kenjutsu which I've seen a lot of, that and we've watched you all enough to pick up most of it, I just wanted some hands-on experience. Confessed Issei, with a chuckle. Murayama gave him a dirty look, before her expression relaxed once again. In that case, let's spar, said Murayama. Issei nodded, before the two eyed each other off. Issei waited for Murayama to make the first move and she quickly advanced on him and struck downwards. Issei held his shinai upwards, with a slight tilt to the left, causing the wood to clack harshly. Issei then quickly brought his sword down on Murayama's right wrist, only to find it blocked. Murayama then leveled a strike at the right side of Issei's abdomen, only for Issei to strafe to the side and avoid the attack, bringing him closer to Murayama's right and attempting a strike to her head. Murayama blocked it and the two continued to trade blows back and forth. As the spar continued, Murayama started to find herself equally surprised and frustrated. Not only was Issei, a complete rookie, matching her, he was doing it so easily, almost as though he wasn't even being challenged. After a few more strikes, Murayama decided to stop holding back so much and started leveling increasingly faster strikes at Issei, occasionally aiming for his left side as well. To Murayama's surprise, Issei found no difficulties blocking on either side, which was surprising. Blows to the left side were not common, outside of those aimed towards the head, which made many, at least a little bit unbalanced when someone could strike at both sides so fluidly. As her strikes picked up in speed, so did Issei's. A furious clacking of wood on wood was all that was heard between the two, both controlling their breathing to a frightening level. Eventually, Murayama decided it was time to end this and aimed a rapid thrust at Issei's throat. Murayama's eyes widened, as she realized that Issei was not wearing the proper gear and a strike to his throat would be devastating, possibly even crippling. Issei felt the intent behind the strike, before Murayama had even moved and had quickly taken his left hand off his shinai. I think that's enough for now, said Issei, gripping Murayama's shinai at the tip, with his left hand, only about a hand's length away from his throat. Murayama blinked for a moment, completely shocked that Issei had caught her strike, but thankful for it. Why yeah, that's a good idea, agreed Murayama, I have to say though, that was interesting. It is different when I have one of my own. Can't really defend against you without it, laughed Issei, as he let go of Murayama's shinai, remembering how many times a shinai had met his flesh in the past. Well, with reflexes like that, I think you'd manage, said Murayama, still a little odd at Issei's speed. In any case, thanks for that. See you tomorrow then. Hopefully, I won't be too annoying, that you feel the need to reacquaint me with your shinai again, after this that is. Said Issei, as he handed his shinai to Murayama, who took it in confusion. What do you mean? Asked Murayama. Well, I'd say all things considered, just knowing that. Stance was all I really needed from this. I've known the strikes for years now, I can keep up with the movements and as you've seen, I have excellent reflexes. Said Issei. Then why didn't you leave after that? Asked Murayama in confusion. Two reasons. One, I wanted to test myself against, what I would say, is the best kendo practitioner in this school. Two, is it so wrong to want to watch you in action up close? Watching from a distance is fine, but before, when you would get up close and personal, it was usually for a beat down. I just wanted to see you in proper action is all. Have to say though, you sure are dangerous with that thing said Issei cheerfully, so that's it then, you're done with Kendo, asked Murayama, somewhat disappointed, I guess, but I'll be sure to keep watching you, said Issei, with a laugh, before walking off, see you tomorrow, said Issei, giving a wave over his shoulder, Murayama watched Issei leave in confusion, before looking at her shinai and widened her eyes, 
The tip was severely cracked and crumbling away, as though one more strike would turn it to dust. Something definitely changed with Hyodo, thought Murayama, before going to return her kendo equipment. Line break, you were so close back then. If you didn't stop yourself, that thing would have turned into splinters. Commented Rainer, I know, muttered Issei, with a blank expression. Rainer looked at Issei curiously, before giving an uncaring shrug. Whatever then, sighed Rainer in boredom. Issei made his way up to his apartment, before heading to his shower. It hadn't been a particularly intense battle, for him anyway, but he had still worked up a small sweat and going to a date without showering, probably wasn't the best idea. After showering, Issei made his way back to his bed and while drying himself off, glared at the picture of Azazel. That's so creepy, he's watching me sleep, thought Issei, before trying to take the picture frame down, only to find it wouldn't budge. Issei frowned, before sighing and simply throwing his towel over the picture. That works, thought Issei, before putting on his pajamas and going to bed. Line break. Finally, it was Saturday. Time for the big date. It was only as Issei made his way to the school, that he realized he had no idea what to expect. Hum, I don't know how to feel about you wearing the same clothes you did to my date with you. That being said, didn't I punch a hole through that shirt? Did you have a replica or something? Asked Rainer, as she walked alongside him. Issei was clad in in a black top, black pants and had a lavender jacket over the top, just as he had on his first and last date with Yuma Amano. That being said, he filled them out much more than he had previously, thanks to his training. Back to the current date, for one thing, he was mostly a passenger in this whole thing, Matsuda was the main part of the date, having asked Kates. Then Kuryu and Motohama had joined in, then lastly, he was roped in for Murayama. I wonder if they will do better than you did. I mean, your date was very safe. Now that I think about it, the complete opposite of what a pervert should have done, I wonder if your friends will be the same, probably not though. Pondered Rainer thoughtfully, reaching the school at 15 to noon, he was surprised to see everyone else was there already. The girls were all dressed in knee-length skirts, yellow for Murayama, blue for Kates and white for Kuryu, coupled with sleeveless tops and a light jacket since it was rather chilly out. Murayama wore a pink top, while Kates wore a green one and Kuryu a black one. Their jackets were red, green and black for Murayama, Kates and Kuryu respectively. Matsuda was wearing tan pants and a white short, sleeved shirt, while Motohama was wearing blue jeans and a black and red checkered, long-sleeved shirt. Uh, sorry for making you wait, said Issei nervously. It's fine, we did say noon. The fact that we all happen to be early is fine, said Kuryu, with the others nodding. All right, in that case, time to go to the first stop, on the best date of your life. Cheered Matsuda, well, I guess ours would have been your worst. After all, how many dates end with death? Laughed Rainer. Where to first? Asked Kates suspiciously. A restaurant, said Matsuda simply, before marching off. As the group started to walk, Issei noticed that Motohama had actually tried to make his hair neat, however, his hair was just as messy as always, causing Issei to softly chuckle to himself. Something funny, asked Murayama, from beside Issei. Nothing, it's just that Motohama tried to style his hair, but he clearly failed miserably. Said Issei in amusement, Murayama looked over at Motohama, before noticing what Issei had and stifled a giggle. Matsuda led the group to a fairly nice western-styled restaurant. It looked to be primarily specialized in burgers, with the apt, yet somewhat crude name, Flame Grilled Slabs. The group of six entered and were seated after a minute, each couple seated across from each other with Issei inside, Motohama in the middle and Matsuda on the edge of their booth. To the restaurant's credit, the food was good, perhaps too good, as Matsuda was a little overeager in his eating causing Issei to snicker to himself, at Katis's slightly irritated expression. Afterwards, Motohama declared they were going to watch a movie and shockingly, the movie was not perverted. A rather simple murder mystery movie, with a group of 20 people, all in their 30s, being invited over to a lavish mansion for dinner, from a peer of theirs from high school. Before this movie even starts, I'm not coming if any of you pull something like this. Said Issei to the group as they waited for the movie to start. Why not? asked Kuryu, 
These things never end well and not seeing someone for a decade means you have no idea what to expect. For all I know, one of you could be a crazed psychopath by the time you turn 30. Answered Issei, I think if anyone went crazy, it'd be you, Issei. Cheesed Kuryu, you know, considering that within a year you died, became a devil and then an angel, she's got a point. Said Rainer, seated beside Issei. From left to right, Rainer was seated to Issei's left, Murayama to Issei's right, Kates to Murayama's right, Matsuda to Katas's right, Kuryu to Matsuda's right and finally, Motohama on the other end. The movie started off as movies do, snippets of background information on the various characters and their history, with the one throwing the party on an island. However, once everyone arrived, the one who invited them was not present. Oh, you just know people are going to start dying now. Grinned Rainer, true to her words, one of them, a model, was found dead, with a sculpture of the Eiffel Tower embedded in her chest. After that, a rather large man, a construction worker, was found the next day, impaled on a model of a pyramid. After the fourth death, a woman, poisoned with venom from a spider, found only in Australia, people had started snuggling up together. Murayama was leaning into Issei's shoulder, Kates had shuffled over to Matsuda and much to Issei's amusement, Motohama was gripping onto Kuryu's hand and partially burying his face into her shoulder. Issei tried and succeeded in containing his laughter, but Rainer guffawed loudly from beside him, falling off her chair in the process. The movie concluded as Issei had expected, the host failing one too many times and becoming frustrated. Revealing himself to the group, only for the man who had been impaled on the pyramid, to have actually survived. Weakened as he was, he was still able to bring the very same pyramid, which had impaled him, down onto the head, of their much scrawnier attacker, breaking his neck. After that, he, along with the last two survivors, left the island, concluding the movie. As the group left the theater, Motohama had calmed down somewhat, but still held Kuryu's hand. Matsuda on the other hand, was now walking as close to Kates as possible, without actually touching her. All in all, Issei was quite surprised at the progress they were both making. It was then he glanced down and noticed Murayama was still leaning into his side, his left arm around her shoulders. Now, the final stop, declared Matsuda, as after the three-hour-long movie, the sun was officially begging to make its way down. It was still fairly high on the horizon, but another two or three hours and it would have dipped below the surface. The final stop, as Matsuda had declared, was a karaoke bar, much to Issei's amusement, knowing just how bad the two of his friends were at singing. That being said, Issei was no angel, well, at least at singing. Issei had let Matsuda and Motohama do their embarrassing duet. Despite being embarrassing though, it certainly created a fun atmosphere, so much so that Issei mustered up the courage to butcher a song of his own. One pop song later and Issei had found, that strangely enough, his singing had improved and much to his embarrassment, had been forced to sing another by the group, only this time, they had chosen it for him. Melody of the Wild Dance, by Sid had come up and Issei smiled, being familiar with the song and in fact, quite fond of it. As he finished the song, Issei looked over to the group of five and noticed them all looking at him in awe. Um, is something wrong? Asked Issei nervously, when the hell did you get to be such a good singer? You sucked just as bad as us a few months ago, said Matsuda in shock. Um, dunno, said Issei sheepishly. After that, the girls sang, study x study by Stylip S and surprised the trio of perverts. Wow, you sounded just like them, exclaimed Issei, with the other two nodding in muted silence. Well, Kates and I have actually practiced that one a lot, but Kuryu did a really good job as well, said Murayama happily. After a few more renditions of various songs, Matsuda proposed the idea of couples singing songs together. There was quite a bit of grumbling, most of them feeling a duet was definitely not their thing, much more suited to people twice their age, but Matsuda persisted and the rest eventually gave in. As expected, Matsuda and Motohama tried their best, but singing really wasn't their thing. However, when Issei and Murayama stood up, the other four watched in interest, looking forward to a duet by two rather good singers. The song picked at random by the two, was, Possibility, a duet between Daichi Miura and Boa. As the two sang, their friends watched on in admiration. A duet was hard enough to pull off, 
even between two good singers, but the duo of Issei and Murayama made for an absolutely breathtaking performance. As they finished, their friends applauded and much to their embarrassment, so did a few others who were in the karaoke club as well. I'm not doing that again, huffed Issei, with a small blush. Murayama, with a slightly bigger blush, nodded in agreement. But you guys were so good, exclaimed Kates. Yeah, you completely buried us you know. Ah, who would have thought Issei was such a good singer? Lamented Motohama, with a wry grin. What's your secret Issei? Been having lessons since last time. Cheesed Kiryu. Actually, it is because you are an angel now. You, didn't think that having the voice of an angel was just an expression, did you? Cheesed Rainair. Uh, no, just, I dunno, maybe I was just having a bad day back then. Chuckled Issei nervously. The group kept singing for another hour, but no more duets were sung and Issei didn't sing again, too embarrassed at the applause that might follow. When the group stepped outside, it had become dark, or at least, it would have been, if not for all the neon lights. The group walked out of the entertainment district of Kuo and headed back to the residential park, where everyone lived. The group slowly splintered off, with Matsuda offering to walk Kate's home, which she actually accepted, causing Matsuda to smile and for Issei to raise an eyebrow. Looks like they did better than you thought, commented Rainier, after Motohama and Kuryu left. So Murayama, where to from here? Asked Issei. Just a bit further, that way, mumbled Murayama sleepily. Um, which way? Asked Issei, only to see Murayama was practically sleepwalking, leaning into him for support. Issei gave a small sigh, before turning slightly to head towards his apartment. Oh, what are you going to do now? Take her back for some hot and steamy action. Teased Rainier. Issei deadpanned at the apparition. I'm such a pervert sometimes. Sighed Issei internally. Hey, you were thinking it, otherwise, I wouldn't have said it. Quipped Rainier. Issei sighed audibly this time, but didn't speak back to the fallen angel. My mind is messed up no matter what I am it seems. Thought Issei dryly. That's all for now till next time.